Hello, and welcome to another episode of Coding Secrets. Based on how you voted on Twitter and the Game Hut website, this episode I'll be explaining how the rotating tower was achieved in Mickey Mania. This effect was inspired by an old Commodore 64 game called Nebulous, which was years ahead of its time. First of all, let's strip away all the layers and see what we have going on here. Right at the back, we have a single scrolling playfield that is used to produce the illusion of depth. Because it's so far away from the camera, the effects of perspective are small, so it can just be a flat plane and still look convincing. So next, let's take a look at the tower itself. It's got some lovely lighting going on and a nice bump map texture, but of course there's some tricks behind it. If we narrow our view, we can see that it's actually built of repeating strips of an animated texture. And if we split this down even further, we can see that the bottom strip is just the top strip offset by a few frames. So that means we can build the whole tower out of just this strip. But what about our favourite mirroring trick? Can that help us out here again? Well, it doesn't look like it, as mirroring produces an odd looking effect. But if we separate the two halves and run the right hand side's animation in the opposite direction, we can see that it's pretty close, but there's a noticeable join, as the brick texture would have to be mirrored for this to work, and we decided it wasn't worth impacting the visuals in this case to save that little bit of extra memory. So that just leaves this animating strip as the single building block of the whole tower, and we can see that it is just 16 frames of animation. This strip is just 192 pixels wide and 16 pixels tall. Given that a pixel costs just half a byte, we can see that a single frame of animation is just 1536 bytes, and so the whole memory footprint for the rotating tower is just 24k. So what about all the rotating platforms around the tower itself? Well, if we isolate one, we can see that it has a nice smooth movement around the side of the tower. But if we take all the sideways movement out, we can see that it's just an animating sprite. And because we've made it symmetrical when it's in the centre of the screen, we can mirror it to make it move across the other side of the tower. If we throw a few of these sprites on screen with their animations offset, we soon get a nice looking effect. Now, the barrels that bounce after Mickey are just animating sprites like the platforms, and everything else is just 2D sprites from the main game. Just making their paths move around the tower is enough to fool you into thinking they are 3D objects as well. For the second tower section later on in the game, the background playfield is replaced with fire in the foreground, which is just an animating, mirrored and repeated texture. And the barrels are replaced with animated bouncing spikes instead. Incidentally, the tower, platform, spikes and barrels were all built and rendered using a Silicon Graphics Indigo workstation running Softimage. The software alone cost $30,000 a copy. The resulting frames underwent colour reduction and compression using our own proprietary tools. And that's how it's done. Hope that made some sense to some of you, and I'll see you next time on Coding Secrets.